Hello Awesome Community. Welcome to this session. I am Jaimit, AWS Community Builder and AWS Serverless Developer. In this session, I am going to cover overview about AWS and relevant uh, most widely used uh, AWS services. So let us start with uh, directly jump into the um, relevant topic and I will give you the quick, quick idea about what is exactly the AWS and how you can get started uh, using this AWS and go deeper into that. So first of all, I can start with uh, what is a cloud computing. Cloud computing is nothing but like uh, we are getting the uh, uh, we are accessing the storage and some other uh, uh, resources on the internet. Same way, uh, in in past we was using like hosted services, uh, hosted servers, physical servers on our uh, premise on premises. But nowadays we have a uh, cloud concept. So uh, we, uh, same way like this AWS. Uh, AWS nothing but a, a very big uh, cloud provider, Amazon Web Service. Uh, services which is a cloud provider which is providing different cloud uh, resources like compute resources, uh, storage resources, uh, network resources and many lots of more than 200 services provided um, on single platform. So uh, uh, that services we can uh, use uh, by using pay as you go model. Okay. So so this is a aws is very big uh, cloud provider and where we can uh, take a different resources on rand for hosting our website hosting a static website hosting a dynamic website um, um, uh, like we can do some other other kind of stuff uh, and there are, ma there are many models we can uh, um, use uh, for uh, based on our, our requirements okay so uh, there are uh, AWS is supporting uh, if, uh, so whenever you start with AWS your question first things like where, where where I can get started okay so what you need to do is like you need to start with uh, um, AW, uh, this website like aws.amazon.com slash console so where you will need to click on uh, sign in to the console and you need to create your account first. So once you registered your account at the end, it will ask different information and uh, probably at the end you need to uh, give your uh, credit card or a debit card link uh, for a pay I mean uh, payment purpose but, uh, that is compulsory. Uh, but uh, don't worry about it like you need to uh, dig uh, deep go deeper into the different services and uh, feel free to explore it because uh, don't worry about uh, linking the debit card or a credit card because uh, uh, there are uh, Amazon uh, uh, AWS uh, already giving us a uh, many free try free try uh, free tire okay so what it means like whenever you getting started with the uh, AWS web services uh, as soon as you register and link your uh, credit card and sign in uh, you will have this uh, uh, and you, uh, you will have this AWS free tire access okay so that is for uh, one year or uh, like uh, after registration uh, up to one year or something like you can see for 12 month free uh, uh, you are uh, like uh, some services are always free so some services are 12 month free for as a part of this free trial so you can explore here like uh, which services are under free tier say for example uh, you can see like the amazon ec2 will be charged to like 750 hours per month are available under free tier so that will not charge uh, whenever you explore, explore it same way like different services are available um, same way like AWS Lambda will charge for not don't, don't charge anything for 1 million requests under free tier. So that is good like uh, don't worry about don't fear about the charges. Uh, you can keep in mind like uh, check this free tier and uh, sign in and try to explore it because if you do the practical exploration and then and only you will get better idea on this right. So uh, this is uh, your first step to getting started with it. Uh, as soon as 
uh, you sign up and sign in into the console you will after login you will see this kind of uh, web, web, uh, like AWS management console this is a GUI of, for management console here you are able to uh, manage different resources okay so here even you are able to uh, enable uh, like multi-factor authentication for your login so you will have a better security um, like you will get a notification on uh, your uh, mobile as soon as you sign in and you get, you will have a multi-factor authentication with your account okay so after the sign in done uh, let me explain you few services okay so that will give you a better idea uh, overview about like what exactly the uh, AWS is there are more than 200 uh, services so it is hard to explore all the services at a time but it, it would be better you can start with something basic and go deeper into the different services and once you get the fundamental idea of what exactly the AWS and how the different services are work and how that is interlinked you will uh, grab it easily uh, some other and new services launching every time right so as soon as you log in into the console you click on services you will see there are many uh, uh, categories uh, for different services you can see like there are computes there are um, database uh, so there are uh, networking services um, there are storage services uh, so there are many number of range of uh, different categories are there but what i am trying to give you is uh, I am trying to give you uh, some scenario based idea uh, which services when you can use and those kind of things in this uh, AWS overview okay so let us first start with the compute service okay that is because we, that is the basic needs of uh, whenever we start with any project deployment into the cloud so here uh, this compute category having these different services these are the different services so always um, uh, this is uh, first service to getting started like ec2 that is a kind of like virtual server um, so far we, we we was having a hosting like we was hosting our on premises services this is a pay as you go model so we are taking virtual server on cloud uh, as a rent okay so this ec2 is a kind of your virtual server uh, you can easily uh, launch your virtual server with uh, needful uh, 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 memory and cpu uh, as per your needs so, uh, so like this is a, uh, a main console of that relevant to ec2 so here you are easily able to launch it like when you click on launch you will have a different option like you need to give, uh, go through some uh, different step like you need to select the uh, tiers which tier you want to um, I mean, uh, uh, you need to select the particular OS, which OS you want to use, how much space you want to give and all those steps. So you can always select free tier, uh, say for example, uh, let me, uh, uh, no, I'm not going deeper, for, but I'm going first time uh, just for one service. So you can select free tier and you can just, you can see this is eligible free tier. So you can select it. Uh, uh, there will be some default setting also. So I am using this T2 micro. There are many number of different types of um, uh, instances available on, for this. So I am selecting uh, T2 micro. So it will have a one CPU and one GB of uh, internal memory. So for now I am reviewing launch it for just a demo perspective. Here you need to give like uh, keys. Uh, if you want to generate the keys, then you can generate it. For now I am doing proceed without key because I am just demonstrating this ser service for overview purpose, okay. So here you can see like uh, I just uh, launched my EC2 instance. So uh, later I am able to connect this instance and I am able to do whatever operation I want to do, okay. But this is just a, like uh, we are launching our server, okay. You can assume like we are launching our server with some CPU and some memory. So that is a compute service EC2. Uh, same way like uh, this is a, uh, kind of uh, like uh, uh, virtual server we are uh, we, we we need to manage some things uh, i mean we need to manage uh, some but uh, something in in this particular service case uh, this lambda lambda is another compute service uh, this is a kind of like serverless service uh, we can say serverless service so everything managed by aws uh, behind the scenes and we just need to host our function uh, um, 
over there so say for example uh, this lambda service uh, here um, only only uh, uh, whenever we launch any function uh, we just need to say for example to do uh, function we can say get to do or something uh, okay so and we just need to select runtime say for example node.js and uh, default we are creating function so so it, it, it is just quick serverless everything managed by aws there will be of course servers but that we did not need to care about it serverless means aws will take care of those uh, behind the scenes servers servers and all those things we only just need to launch our function and we need to do the business logic so this is a quick uh, serverless compute service okay so the, the, these are the different uh, i mean uh, is these are the widely used uh, services like ec2 lambda same way this light cell is kind of like uh, we can easily launch uh, everything together like compute storage network everything so like you know, like say for example uh, we want to host our website directly so assume we are doing our hosting right so here uh, in hosting case we are getting uh, everything together so uh, this light cell is kind of uh, lightweight hosting for us. So it will give us together everything like storage and network and uh, all the uh, this. Uh, so you are, you are easily able to host your uh, uh, web website uh, in some cheaper package case by using that light cell. Okay. Uh, uh, so these are uh, some compute service over you. Um, there are uh, storage uh, service also. So here, if we see wide use storage services as three, so whenever we want to store any uh, different files, say for example, images or videos and all those files, we are using this S3 services. Okay. So in this S3 service case, um, we are, we just need to create a bucket, like say, for example, we can give uh, XYZ bucket name uh, or we can say demo bucket name or whatever. And we need to select the region and we just need to uh create our bucket okay we need to give this uh bucket unique uh, uh okay so that uh i'm just for now uh, giving specific name so it should be unique or something okay So I, I have just given a unique name. So now it's launching the bucket. Okay. So this bucket, I have already some other bucket uh, relevant to other things, but this is a bucket. So here we are able to easily upload the files and all those things in even we can do programmatically. So this is uh, files we are saving in the S3 bucket and we are using uh, in our project or somewhere uh, through cloud. Okay. But this is a storage service. Same way this EFS is also kind of uh, uh, file storage service we can uh, set it across uh, uh, multiple e ec2 and all those things storage gateway is for kind of hybrid mode like if you want to use on premises and s3 together in that case we can use storage gateway in between glacier is kind of for archive services like we have a lot of file and we want to uh, do some files archive then we are using this s3 glacier so these are some so widely used storage services same way in uh, database we have these different services like uh, uh, this dynamo db is one kind of hardly widely used uh, services in serverless uh, the dynamo db is a no sql and serverless uh, database uh, service we can say uh, so no sql means like um, it, it is easily uh, scalable uh, behind the scenes and uh, uh, we are able, we able to do high traffic application in that scenario we are able to use DynamoDB and uh, easy, it is completely managed by AWS so it is a totally serverless uh, service uh, same way this RDS means like uh, RDS supporting many different database engine that is relevant to relational databases say for example MySQL uh, uh, some other like MariaDB and some many different uh, engine is supported by uh, RDS uh, so it is a relational database okay so here we are able to launch our database and all those management uh, we are able to do in, under these RDS uh, services that is also one of widely used database service so uh, if we, if, when we are creating database it is asking us like 
we are easily able to create database and it is asking us uh, to select the particular engine like we want to launch mysql database whether we want to launch mariadb database or a postgre database oracle uh, amazon aurora is also a default i mean uh, our, uh, this is a, a amazon uh, uh, database uh, uh, amazon aurora so these are different engine uh, we are able to um, select uh, okay and uh, uh, if we select say for example my, uh, mysql and uh, some particular it asking for which particular version you want to launch, uh, launch whether it is for a production or you are trying free trial so we can say free trial we are for now like as a demo purpose and we can just uh, select whatever or like different options which db instance class so for now we are using uh, uh, lesser like uh, dbt2 micro so it will have a single cpu single G one gb ram so it will be uh, not charge us more, more much more okay so let us create database okay it, it is asking for us a, like uh, what will be username and password you want to give so for now i am giving just uh, anything uh, to just uh, demonstrate the service okay so that way you are easily able to create the database uh, Okay, we need to give a more character, so sorry. Let me generate password. It's quick we can easily generate password here right so we need a few more characters so that would be easy for us like uh, for now it's demonstration purpose so i'm giving anything for now so don't worry about it so here it is just creating a database okay so uh, here it will take a time so as soon as it is created it will show us a database instance and we are able to uh, see the detail relevant to it and uh, we are easily able to connect this database by using like uh, detail relevant to it uh, like uh, we will have an endpoint and uh, we will have a, a particular endpoint we will have a username and password so we, we are e easily able to connect this database by using SQL, SQL pure or any kind of uh, client tool okay so this is just an example so we can use any engine right now i just launched the mysql okay so this is an rds service for relational database is widely used service same way this DynamoDB is also uh, uh, widely used service for a serverless uh, case uh, then RDS is a relational database there are serverless Aurora also available serverless uh, um, in, uh, in a relational case so this is you can see like the fast and flexible NoSQL database service for any scale so this is a kind of uh, uh, like NoSQL uh, same way elastic cache is nothing but like uh, this elastic cache is an in memory uh, uh, in memory uh, database we can say that is used for caching purpose uh, uh, say for example we will we have an application that is using rds and we have a very high traffic on rds and we want to uh, distribute our tra traffic uh, uh, instead of reaching out directly to the relational database it can uh, fast and store data uh, into the cache in that case we can use elastic cache like we have a two options like redis and uh, uh, you can see like elastic cache is kind of like caching in memory uh, database uh, and we, we are able to use two things here mem cache or redis okay so it is uh, really fast and uh, in high traffic rds application we are easily able to do the caching in between so that is uh, also one one good option for caching purpose so these are the high, highly used uh, uh, database services. <coughs> Sorry. So apart from uh, this, uh, 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 we covered the compute, we covered the storage, we covered the database. So let us now jump to uh, 
network services. Uh, if we see uh, network services, there will be VPC. Uh, so that is a virtual, uh, a virtual private cloud. Uh, uh, so Sometimes we want to make a secure uh, specific portion of our application. We want to create a private uh, uh, cloud uh, and we want to launch some resources inside, say, uh, inside that. In that case, we are able to easily launch uh, VPC and subnet inside the particular VPC private or public subnets. Okay. So uh, in, in particular cloud, we are able to launch a private and public subnet. So say for example, we want to launch our RDS within a um, private subnet and we want to um, uh, uh, like uh, that way we are able to make a database secure. So nobody is able to access. internet is not directly not able to reachable uh, to the database and all those kind of things. So this VPC is also widely used uh, services for uh, logically partition the uh, network okay so we are easily able to launch uh, vpc as well as subnet and all those things and we are able to link those uh, our resources with this uh, vpc according to the needs uh, okay so this is one widely used service apart from that we have this route 53 uh, that is kind of like uh, dns service uh, uh, um, that is for like uh, we want to uh, this are uh, route 53 is for just uh, uh, launching uh, uh, like, like like we are able to use it for um, a DNS uh, mapping purpose okay so whenever we are launching any uh, different uh, resources and any different endpoints uh, we are yeah, by by launching um, hosted zone within a route 53 we are uh, easily able to uh, map our domain uh, with the uh, our resources like uh, say for example uh, we have a cloud front or uh, any any an s3 or any resources and we want to link that uh, so so that we are easily uh, able to uh, 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 launch a hosted zone and uh, we are able to uh, map it uh, through the uh, routing rules okay so we can even if we have a uh, domain we are able to also purchase a registered domain if we have a domain from other provider we are easily able to uh, map it, uh, those uh, uh, ns record uh, within a uh, route 53 so that we are also able to map different uh, domain we purchase from some third party uh, also here by using those NS record from those. Uh, so, so this is just route 53 is mainly uh, purpose is uh, for uh, like DNS mapping. Okay. So this is a one another uh, network service widely used. Apart from that, uh, we have this cloud front. Uh, so this cloud front is uh, also widely used service, uh, uh, network service, so network and content delivery. So mainly this global content delivery service. Uh, this service mainly uh, uh, used for Amazon cloud front is a, uh, a CDN service means uh, content delivery service uh, that is mainly uh, used for uh, low latency uh, data delivery. Uh, so, uh, like uh, CloudFront generally used uh, for, say, for example, we have a heavy S3 file, uh, we have a very big size video or uh, images and we want to uh, deliver it quickly on any location. Uh, and then in that case, uh, uh, we say, for example, we have that image or video stayed on uh, uh, some particular location and we uh, in India and we want to get access to particular big uh, big video or big images in uh, that's uh, in the USA location so it will take a time so in that case this uh, CDN play a major uh, services play a major role so CDN services in that case will use uh, to reduce the uh, latency and it will do the caching at each level okay so each location levels uh, whenever someone access that file into um, us then it will be cached at its location near to that particular uh, uh, location uh, uh, so ne next time it will be get uh, 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 loaded from cache uh, from these location so this this is same way used for 
this uh, uh, Amazon Cloud Front CDN uh, used for S3 when uh, load, load balancer API gateway uh, more. So this is a kind of like uh, CDN service for low latency data delivery. Okay. So that is just uh, about CloudFront. Apart from that, in network and content delivery category, we have this API gateway. So this is a one of uh, also widely used the serverless category um, a, um, service. This API uh, gateway service widely used for creating the APIs, uh, different APIs like different types of APIs, WebSocket or REST-based APIs or TP-based uh, APIs. And when we create any REST APIs, um, uh, like the, it will give us an endpoint uh, to call uh, uh, that particular endpoint uh, 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 as an API and that endpoint will link with some other services say for example this API gateway link with the uh, um, uh, Lambda function so as soon as this uh, API gateway endpoint get call it will uh, do the Lambda function call okay so if you say, say for example let me quickly create one endpoint uh, say I'm creating a race type API okay and uh, regional and uh, okay so it's it's just uh, imported but uh, directly but uh, let me create a new one for now press uh, api so i am just selecting the rest api type build okay i'm uh, just rest uh, type is rest. I am giving a new APIs. Say for example, uh, demo API. And uh, here um, I am just uh, giving a type region type and creating APIs. Okay. So after creating APIs, uh, here we need to create the uh, particular uh, uh, method for it. Okay. So here we can say. Um, mm, uh, cat method for example and once we give that cat method it will give us a different options like whether you to do you want to do this endpoint as a mock mock endpoint or you want to link it with some other services for now i'm linking it with lambda function okay so uh, i'm selecting integration type lambda and here i am selecting that same uh, lambda function which we created before uh, like get to do and i'm saving it okay so it's just uh, giving the another permission to invoke the lambda function to the API gateway. And here we go, like we have this API endpoint is ready. Uh, that uh, endpoint will uh, link to uh, our functions, okay? So as soon as I deploy it, say for example, I'm deploying it to test environment, a new stage, I'm deploying it. So here I will get this endpoint, okay? So as soon as I will run uh, this endpoint, uh, it will hello from Lambda, right? So that is just uh, giving the output from our uh, Lambda function because we link that our Lambda function here. You can see uh, Lambda function we created before uh, uh, when I talk about Lambda, right? And come in the compute section. So you can see like data is 200 and hello from Lambda. So that's some output we get here. And this is a API uh, gateway endpoint and it is linked with the Lambda function. Okay, so this way we are easily able to implement a REST API uh, by using API gateway and uh, Lambda function. Within a Lambda function, we are able to do any business logic like we want to connect with the DynamoDB or, and get fetch some data. We want to connect with RDS and fetch some data or many kind of different operations we can do within the uh, Lambda function or runtime by using different programming languages like Node.js or Java or any other supported runtimes, okay? So this API gateway is easily able to create an endpoint like this. So this is about API gateway, okay? So this is a, a, one of the widely used uh, network and content delivery uh, services. Uh, so we covered here in the VPC uh, row 53 uh, CloudFront and API gateway, those are somewhat widely used services. Apart from that, let us uh, go ahead and cross check like if anything we just need anything widely used or commonly required things, then I will explain that first.
if we see the management and governance here this is auto scaling that is also uh, uh, used in uh, high traffic environment applications say for example we have uh, some uh, application in which we are using ec2 and those kind of architecture in that case we have a uh, some what's uh, uh, uncertain traffic like we don't know about traffic uh, when it will go high or down or something like that uh, unpredictable traffic in that case we are uh, using auto scaling so that is uh, a cost effective service which means it will easily help us to auto scale the ec2 instance uh, say for example whenever traffic goes high it will automatically up the uh, our application uh, servers okay ec2 instances so it can up and down the resources according to the application needs and traffic okay so this is a good uh, auto scaling service for a uh, scaling uh, our resources uh, or a scale up or scale down our resources according to the needs okay so that will handle the traffic unpredictable traffic so this is a good service for scaling up and down the resources cloud formation that is uh, um, uh, this service is a uh, uh, core part of uh, uh, we can say infrastructure as a code so uh, we can create and manage resources by using templates okay uh, so uh, like uh, it's it's like kind of uh, uh, and uh, be able to uh, deploy the templates and it will auto up the resources uh, by using that infrastructure uh, as a code languages so this cloud formation is core part of um, uh, infrastructure as a code uh, languages like sam or a serverless framework and uh, uh, cdk we are doing cdk for uh, serverless application deployment so this cloud for formation is the somewhat core part for this infrastructure uh, up and uh, like we are easily able to deploy different resources uh, different set of resources uh, through single yml or json based uh, template easily uh, so we are, we are we are able to up we are able to easily uh, up the stack and down the stack by by using this cloud formation so it is really uh, good services for managing resources by using templates okay the same way this uh, uh, cloud trail that is also a management and governance one of the service uh, that is generally mainly we are using for uh, tracking the user activity and api uses and mainly we are using it for auditing purpose okay so uh, uh, for a go governance compliance and auditing purpose like uh, whenever any services are call it or whenever what are the different activities that is get locked so that is very 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 much used for auditing purpose this cloud trap cloud watch is also very widely used uh, um, uh, serverless service uh, means uh, this service we are using for uh, monitoring purpose uh, i mean uh, 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 monitoring our resources and our application so uh, uh, we are easily able to check the locks of our application say for example we recently run our lambda right lambda function through api get man manually also so here we are able to check the locks of that particular call so cloud watch, watch is very uh, good services for monitoring purpose monitoring different low uh, locks different metrics for the uh, calls and all those things uh, even um, cloud watch uh, events we are able to use for uh, scheduling purpose this uh, this is now we we are telling it a event bridge because that section the cloud watch event is now event bridge and we are easily able to schedule any uh, particular uh, uh, lambda function or uh, uh, like cron job kind of things by using this uh, cloud watch event means event bridge okay so this uh, uh, mainly this service is uh, you love whenever any fun uh, like uh, lambda function call or anything we are easily able to track those logs in this cloud watch for a debugging or a uh, some general information purpose okay so apart from that uh, this control tower is for kind of like managing multiple account uh, environment case uh, for aws uh, apart from that if we see this aws organization is also kind of for, for uh, managing across the uh, that is service mainly for managing uh, 
uh, different things uh, across the uh, AWS account. So it's for like uh, central manage the multiple uh, uh, AWS accounts. So we are not going much deeper into that for now. So this is just uh, some of the widely used uh, particular services. Machine learning, like this is a very uh, big topic. Um, like there are lots of service within this particular one. Uh, so um, um, uh, this is, for example, if you want to do some uh, machine learning kind of things, uh, text to speech, speech to stacks or uh, text or some kind of those kind of uh, uh, um, machine learning operations. For example, we want to turn any uh, text into uh, speech in that case we can use amazon poly uh, sometime we, uh, we want to search and analyze some images in that case we can use amazon uh, recognize uh, sometime we want to extract uh, some uh, data or text like um, so in that case easily extract and uh, uh, data from this like uh, amazon text uh, text track that from so those kind of machine learning services are also available as a part of uh, uh, AWS services. We are not going much deeper into this for now. There are a lot of uh, services to more than 200, so it's hard to cover. Uh, IoT uh, also, section also cover many IoT uh, relevant services. So in this case, we are able to do any um, uh, hardware device relevant operation kind of things like embedded application kind of things by using this IoT applications. This is a really uh, cool to explore like Arduino and many kind of de devices uh, operations supported and we can do that uh, different IoT application through that. Um, this gaming also like relevant to GAM section. Uh, front end and web, uh, front end web and mobile that is also cool and widely used uh, things. Um, uh, I mean uh, uh, like relevant to our web development. This AWS Amplify is like uh, recently uh, growing fast and um, people are trying to uh, use it. I mean, uh, this uh, Amplify launching uh, new and new things every day. So this uh, AWS Amplify is a uh, uh, kind of uh, front end and web uh, mobiles. Uh, uh, we can say a particular service that is mainly used for developing and web application that is supporting a set of tools. Uh, and we can say like uh, CLI, Amplify CLI, as well as uh, frameworks. Uh, uh, ready to use some functions so we can easily uh, uh, de develop uh, uh, like web application securely um, by using powered by AWS. So we have like some uh, UI components, uh, we have a, uh, some CLIs. So like it is a kind of, uh, 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 we can say like it is a complete platform. Uh, um, it, it will have a set of CLI, uh, it is have a set of uh, frameworks so that by using that we are easily able to uh, develop build uh, and testing and run a mobile and web application okay so this is kind of like cool for uh, front end guys uh, can easily uh, up and deploy the web application powered by AWS cloud so this is a cool tool uh, and uh, going fast okay so uh, now jump into the app sync uh, AWS AppSync is uh, one of the uh, really cool and uh, strong services we can say uh, that is uh, based on uh, 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 GraphQL operations. Uh, so that is also uh, part of front end web and mobile. Uh, uh, by using this AppSync uh, services, we are easily able to um, uh, uh, like implement any uh, GraphQL APIs. Uh, uh, that 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 will uh, uh, like th that that will have a, a lot of uh, um, uh, provider supports. I mean, data provider support. So by using this uh, uh, GraphQL, uh, I mean AppSync service, we are easily uh, 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 like able to um, uh, 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 like uh, we are easily able to. Um, uh, uh, connect with any uh, data provider. Say, for example, let me launch uh, one uh, API for now.
let me uh, yeah so then that that uh, app sync is uh, nothing but like uh, uh, exactly uh, let me show the architecture for this uh, uh, service uh, so you will get more idea exactly yeah so this is how it's work like uh, uh, as a part of app sync like uh, from web or mobile application you are able to call this aws uh, app sync uh, 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 services uh, endpoints that endpoint is um, uh, like uh, th that endpoint have a multiple resolvers like you are directly able to communicate with different uh, 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 di different pro uh, pro providers uh, so like uh, uh, um, uh, query like uh, whenever uh, front end call that GraphQL API uh, like AppSync API that uh, that will easily uh, communicate with multiple uh, databases or even microservices or API from uh, uh, different endpoints. Say for example, uh, whenever any front end call the AppSync endpoint, it will uh, it will have a resolver or, uh, like uh, many different database supported like DynamoDB, Aurora, and uh, also even we are able to do the Lambda based resolver. So. A field level uh, resolver is also possible so this is a very powerful uh, 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 service we can say okay so we even we are able to do some different uh, http call also as a resolver so that that is a re but that is mainly work with the uh, graphql uh, uh, based call okay Uh, same way like the Amazon uh, device farm is just for uh, testing purpose uh, for testing uh, um, uh, on different uh, um, like uh, uh, mobile or uh, devices. Uh, I mean iOS or Android and on virtually on the cloud uh, web application. Amazon location service is also newly, newly launched uh, uh, like uh, uh, um, service which is uh, for a location uh, uh, integration like if you want to do location based integration we are easily able to uh, do that as a part of our application okay so now we move forward this is also widely used uh, services uh, developer tools yeah so this is a really interesting for developers uh, we have a cloud 9 cloud 9 is in um, like cloud uh, editor so that is uh, official supported by AWS uh, cloud ID for writing uh, I mean for developing uh, and debugging the code so uh, this cloud and whenever we launch environment and launch it uh, we are easily able to launch it by using kind of like we are launching EC2 uh, instance similar way we are able to easily launch AWS 9 where we are uh, within a uh, browser we are able to do uh, open our cloud 9 editor and we are able to do coding we are able to do uh, run the commands and all those things on that particular so develop debug and everything in the browser based cloud 9 ID uh, so even we can do a lambda and all those function debugging uh, on the fly so this is a really cool cloud 9 ID by AWS as a service Okay. Cloud cell is also kind of like uh, we are easily able to run the AWS CLI command in the browser mode uh, by using AWS cell instead of locally install the AWS CLI and do the commands, right? So you can see like here we directly uh, uh, here we directly able to uh, run our commands like we are able to do like you can see I did AWS. Uh, uh, dash dash version so it is giving us a civil CIWS CLI already installed there and we, it is giving us version we are able to do uh, any commands whatever we want uh, for AWS uh, CLI okay so this is just a uh, uh, in browser um, cloud cell uh, we can do anything uh, in the within a browser as a CLI okay and um, apart from that we have this uh, uh, code commit code commit is kind of like uh, we have a git repository right so in github we are creating some repository in bitbucket we are creating some some repository similar way in code commit uh, we are able to easily uh, create our private repository uh, and uh, uh, like we are uh, able to use that private repository as a remote in our local repository and we are easily able to push our code so it is kind of our uh, secured uh, and scalable 
uh, git repository we are easily able to create the repository say for example here we can uh, even here we, we are also able to search code commit and uh, we can directly like create uh, um, uh, our whatever demo rep repository and like a quick way we are able to create the repository and um, directly we are able to add that uh, repository URL whatever way SSS or HTTPS we can grab that URL and we are able to add as a remote in our local repository and uh, push it and ready to go so it, it also we are able to generate those uh, uh, git uh, I mean code commit repository credential uh, through the I am uh, I am uh, users okay so uh, yeah so uh like uh, those are uh, 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 like secure way we are able to uh, access it uh, through i am i am user uh, we are able to uh, quickly do this uh, git add remote and push pull operation with this aws code commit repository okay this is a git base uh, at the end okay so after we create this code commit repository here we are also able to implement ci cd pipeline what it means like ci cd means like uh, continuous uh, uh, integration and continuous de delivery like uh, whenever we are developing any project uh, any, any any software we, we, we are we need to take care about deploying those right so whenever in, we are developing any project or a web application we need to uh, we make some automation through some developer tools right so say for example whenever a developer do some coding multiple developers are working on the same project some when they do some coding then do uh, git commit and do git push it will auto trigger some pipeline and uh, uh, that pipeline can do i mean uh, that uh, cicd pipeline that that that, that can um, auto uh, automatically uh, do trigger some code pipeline and it will do code build during code build it will run some unit testing uh, if you want to run it if anything fail it will not de uh, deploy it and if the uh, everything go uh, went well uh, you know testing and everything work well in the build uh, build time it will quickly trigger the bit build and uh, then code deploy uh, in the ci cd continuous integration and continuous deploy pipeline so this developer tool services are widely used for this automation for ci cd operation uh, for continuous integration and continuous delivery of the project okay so this code commit is for creating a private secure scalable repository uh, this code build is uh, for uh, building our projects like uh, whenever we are creating code build project we need to give a uh, uh, like uh, we need to follow some step like we need to uh, give whatever build project we want to create and then um uh, like there are set of steps we need to follow we, we also need to give like which particular source you want to use like whether you want to use uh, some github or some bit bit bucket uh, repository or uh, something else like here we are using code commit so we can easily uh, give repository which we already created and we also need to give like which branch particular branch you want to uh, uh, build on right so those kind of setting uh, we are able to uh, give here and after that we are able to easily uh, create the uh, build project okay so similar way this uh, build uh, section uh, this code build is for a uh, uh, building and testing the code uh, during the ci cd pipeline flow okay so, and this code deploy is a uh, deployment service so that is mainly used for deploying source code to uh, some uh, resources uh, deploying on say for example ec2 uh, and and th those kind of things like uh, so this is for a deployment services uh, code pipeline is a kind of uh, continuous uh, delivery uh, services uh, so it will be kind of combination completely whenever we create pipeline it will asking for all the stage like what uh, what particular um, source uh, or a repository you want to use uh, so pipeline uh, will uh, integrate it with the code commit code build and code deploy three sections so whenever pipeline created it will ask like which repository you want to do action on uh, whenever like say for example whenever developer do code commit and push on master branch for this particular code commit repository it will auto trigger this pipeline and that pipeline will auto trigger code build project and that will do set of operations 
like test cases running and all those things and after that it will do artifact deployments and at the end it will trigger code build so code build will deploy the project so that that way we are easily able to implement our ci cd pipeline like you can see here we, we need to select source like that means whether the code commit repository or a github repository a particular branch whenever someone put to that branch it will trigger the build project build project will do um, you know test and all those build project things and then it will trigger the deployment that will finally deploy the codes um, so that way we'll, we will have automation uh, on our ci cd pipeline deployment so this tool are really used uh, uh, widely used for ci cd pipeline uh, implementation okay so this x-ray uh, x-ray is also kind of like widely used uh, uh, for tracing purpose uh, when uh, we if, in, if we take the case of lambda function uh, whenever we are calling lambda function uh, we are uh, easily able to uh, do the uh, relevant tracing uh, in, in the x-ray so we are able to debug uh, our uh, uh, um, lambda function or a uh, lamb like lambda function um, um, whenever when well, any lambda function call we will have a complete trace of uh, different activities like which uh, what particular uh, uh, micro operation has been done and what are where it is failing and all those kind of tracing we are able to easily do in the aws access so it is very very good uh, used for debugging purpose with the lambda uh, and other application okay so this is a developer tool database we already uh, cover uh, previously okay and container section <laughs> this is a let me take in between uh, this container uh, services are uh, this ECR this elastic container registry that is mainly for like registering the uh, uh, yeah, registering the uh, uh, images uh, web, so say for example share, uh, share and deploy uh, uh, container software uh, as an image uh, say, uh, like um, in, uh, we are creating a docker images right so we are we, uh, we are easily able to create the library of those uh, images uh, in, in con uh, elastic container registry and we are easily able, able to use those images anywhere else okay so uh, this uh, this in elastic container registry is for mainly um, storing the private and uh, public uh, images uh, like we have a, a set of uh, uh, packages right uh, like uh, docker container having a uh, os and then some application on top of that those all are we creating image and storing into this so this amazon ecr is for a container registry purpose uh, elastic container service that is also uh, like highly secure reliable and scalable uh, uh, container services uh, uh, like amazon ecs is um, uh, doc, we are easily able to run the uh, docker containers uh, for this uh, within uh, this uh, amazon container services we are easily able to launch uh, uh, clusters um, and within a cluster we are easily able to launch uh, 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 our containers with the launch type by even we have a two option we are able to launch serverless serverless container also by using fargate uh, or uh, we are able to launch uh, ecs uh, like ecs uh, a launch type with ec2 instance as well so uh, but uh, it is like uh, behind the scenes it is take care of like docker things okay and even we are able to do uh, uh, load balancing based architecture also so many things possible with this okay so here you can see like we are easily able to um, uh, do this kind of thing like launching a cluster and then launching a services within that cluster and some cluster uh, task particular task launching in that and those kind of things we are easily able to do okay uh, in that this case so uh, there are two ways serverless container through fargate and ec2 okay so this is docker based uh, container services uh, same way this elastic uh, EK, eks that is a kubernetes uh, services so that is uh, kind of like we are easily able to um, do this uh, fully managed, managed uh, uh, kubernetes control panel so 
uh, as soon as you launch the cluster, you don't need to worry about installing the Kubernetes and all those things. So that will be uh, uh, behind the scenes available. Okay, so this is uh, just Kubernetes based container uh, services. Compute services, I think we already uh, covered pretty much all things. Business application, if we see, uh, uh, we can ignore that for now. We are just uh, seeing widely used services only for now, like Post Explorer and all those things are for uh, posting purposes. Uh, uh, this application integration, if we see, we have this some of the serverless services uh, in this section. Uh, so I will start with the, uh, let's go by step by step, Amazon Event Bridge. Okay, so Amazon Event Bridge is a uh, kind of uh, like uh, services uh, for mainly uh, like um, uh, that that is uh, that is mainly for uh, implementing the event driven application uh, in that case what happened like event generated from a different application either from a SaaS based application or some other aws services okay so it is decoupling the uh, some services uh, and it is also handling the event uh, distributions okay so it is kind of like event we can also say event routing in the event driven application so uh, say for example some events are generating from uh, different sources some like some app SaaS application or some other application event are generated those event go to uh, amazon event bus there are uh, we are able to do uh, create some custom bus there are default bus also available so as soon as we some events come to event amazon event with bus it will have uh, some rules defined it so based on that though event routing rule match within a particular bus it will trigger the destination so destination might be uh, some uh, uh, already supported services like lambda or some other services so we, we by using amazon event bridge uh, we are able to do event routing by using like custom routing rules or predefined routing rules we are able to do the routing say for example whenever some pattern match within a request uh, uh, it will uh, call the particular lambda function so those kind of things also possible through amazon event bridge we are even even with default bus we are able to do um, scheduling the lambda function or some uh, scheduling kind of operation also like cron job or kind of things uh, same as we talk about in CloudWatch event section, but because CloudWatch event is now uh, event bridge, okay. So that is just a quick overview about event bridge. This is a serverless uh, service. Uh, here we have SNS, uh, that is also simple notification uh, service. Pub, uh, like uh, SNS, uh, simple notification service means a pub sub uh, messaging service, like many to uh, many uh, messaging. Uh, so uh, as soon as we place some uh, message on particular topic, uh, it will uh, pan out to uh, some other uh, consumer or a subscriber, we can say. So as soon as someone publishes the message in particular topic, it will uh, send out to a different subscriber to the, that particular topic. So that is just a notification service, okay. Same way, this uh, uh, SQS is kind of like um, uh, whenever we having high traffic services, uh, in that case, we are uh, want to decouple the uh, application resources. Uh, so, say for example, we have a lambda to uh, so say for example, we want to decouple uh, one lambda call to SQS and then other lambda another lambda will uh, call the SQS. So, uh, we uh, in high traffic uh, scenario, queuing system will help uh, our application to. Uh, be a decoupled and uh, handle the failure scenario easily um, uh, and and it will be scale easily right so producer will uh, produce the event and send to sqs and it will do store those uh, into queue and consumer um, resource or lambda or ec2 uh, will be consume those sqs uh, messages and process it okay so this is very used for high traffic environment case for decoupling the uh, application flow uh, for processing the data and event okay step function is also widely used the serverless this sqs also serverless one of the serverless service step function is also kind of 
uh, serverless service for orchestration purpose like uh, by using this aws tap, tap function we are able to do uh, 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 serverless function or orchestration so uh, it means like uh, based on different condition choice or uh, based on different condition we are able to uh, run certain steps like we are able to call, do some lambda operation we are able to do uh, dynamic dynamo db call or some other steps calls okay so this is a step function is uh, uh, do some certain condition checks and based on that we are easily able to do um, like function and uh, aws service orchestration uh, for a workflow okay so a critical workflow even we can say so this is uh, also having a built-in error handling uh, capability uh, for by aws from uh, step function so uh, if you can see this flow chart like it is already self-explanatory like you are able to choice different uh, services uh, you, even you are able to do a selection of particular flow like uh, if this is happened then do this if this is happened then do that, that particular step uh, so this kind of uh, workflow visual workflow also we are able to define in, in this particular ws uh, step function serverless service so this is also one of the cool service and this is a uh, i think a last category section we are checking uh, analytic service if we can see the uh, like athena that is also kind of like uh, analytic service that we are easily able to do uh, sql query on s3 uh, by using this amazon athena service like uh, we are easily able to do like if you can we have a data in the s3 uh, we are through this service we are able to do query on that uh, through sql and we are grab the anal uh, analyze those data okay so that is kind of one of the um, analytic service uh, this aws blue is kind of like etl service uh, we are able to do kind of extract, transport, and load operation on different uh, um, uh, DB services like uh, DynamDB or uh, like uh, RedSafe and all those uh, uh, kind of uh, database uh, services. So we are able to access those, those data and uh, process and transport and load those data in some different format. So it is kind of good uh, it inbuilt AWS uh, ETL tool as a service. Okay. Kinesis is also kind of uh, widely used service uh, uh, for a real-time streaming data processing. Um, like uh, uh, whenever we have a heavy, heavy events and heavy load of traffic uh, in the uh, like event uh, processing continuously uh, in ha um, heavy traffic in a real-time environment. In that case, we are able to use Amazon Kinesis uh, services, uh, so it can uh, handle uh, those. Uh, stream of data accordingly like we have a three different um, uh, services uh, like particular in this particular uh, uh, section uh, we have uh, like kinesis data stream kinesis data firos and kinesis data analytics so kinesis data stream mainly for real-time data capture and uh, firos is for uh, load those real-time data and this kinesis data analytics for the, uh, get get insight in real time so it is taking a real-time etl Kind of insights okay so this is for a heavy uh, traffic applications uh, to real-time event processing okay uh, like e like uh, some um, um, uh, like real in, in, in um, some devices case we have a real-time event some uh, logs case we have a real-time logs and all those kind of uh, streaming processing we can do easily with the same same way with this msk uh, we are able to handle that uh, i mean uh, uh, like uh, streaming kind of things by using apache kafka okay quick uh, insight is also kind of like analytic uh, uh, like we we are able to see the quick insight in the form of uh, different graph uh, uh, by using this service amazon redshift uh, this amazon redshift is a fast simple as cost, cost effective uh, data warehouse service this is a also good uh, uh, services when we want to distribute our load say for example this amazon redshift is a kind of data warehouse services when, whenever we have a heavy traffic um, uh, uh, application in which we are using a lot of uh, ec2 instance and rds databases and uh, uh, as a primary database and and we want to distribute our load uh, say for example admin reports are uh, reports are uh, generated from some 
data warehouse and real time operation happening on the client side application that is happening in its uh, RDS relational database and we are doing uh, syncing of RDS database with the Redshift uh, warehouse by using TL or some kind of things. So in, in this Amazon Redshift is really useful as a data warehouse like when we want to do distribute our loads and we want to do some analytic operation queries, heavy queries on big data. So this uh, Amazon Redshift is really helpful on those kind of application scenario. Okay. So this is a really good uh, data warehouse and fast performer uh, uh, analytic service. So uh, these are kind of somewhat heavily used uh, different services. Uh, we already covered most of the categories starting from compute uh, to storage and the network and um, developer tools and then front end and web and containers and analytics and all those different services. So here uh, what we get the idea about like which particular services is doing what operation, right? But uh, main thing is like whenever we are going to our uh, becoming the architecture of the our application in the AWS at the time main thing is we need to get idea like what kind of AWS services we, you will use at which particular place right so say for example we want to deploy a static website uh, uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript based website onto the AWS. In that case, what we will do is we can use uh, one of the storage service S3. So in that case, we will uh, create a bucket and host our um, HTML uh, website over there in that bucket. Okay. And uh, after that, uh, we will uh, map this S3 with uh, CloudFront services. Okay. So uh, that that uh, that we can uh, in a network section I think uh, uh, okay so he uh, that S3 bucket we can map with the cloud front uh, um, I, uh, services so uh, by using S3 and cloud front uh, integrated with their S3 folder uh, we, we, we can easily able to uh, host our uh, uh, static website okay same way uh, we are even also able to use route 53 uh, linking so we can even link our domain uh, in, in in that case with the uh, for deploying our s3 uh, i mean static website okay so um, this is some some kind of options like s3 plus uh, 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 cloud front uh, also plus Route 53, we can uh, able to map the domain with the CloudFront URL, right? So we can host our ST, uh, as, like static website code in S3 bucket. Then we can launch the CDN CloudFront and then we we'll, uh, link with S3 and then that CloudFront URL we can map through our uh, real time domain like www.xyz.com. So through Route, uh, I mean, through Route 53 uh, service, okay? So that way we can easily launch our uh, 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 static website. If we want to build our dynamic web application in a non-serverless way means like EC2 in that case what happened like first of all we can uh, uh, we can uh, launch our EC2 instance like uh, um, say for example Linux based EC2 instance um, then we can install uh, some needful application inside that say for example PHP and uh, and we can get it uh, hosted our code over there okay so we can create it as a application server then we can create a database say for example rds mysql and then we can create that mysql database so so that database will get connected with the uh, within an application server code and uh, so our ac2 instance is run and that will connect to database so it will be um, uh, in, in our dynamic uh, application case okay so this our application uh, server ec2 instance will run our application code and connect with database and process the data and s3 uh, will help us to get the static uh, images and uh, videos and those kind of file even we are able to use uh, cloud front in between like uh, so that uh, whatever heavy video or images and those kind of things coming through cdn okay clouds cloud 
CD and CloudFront so that will uh, load it fast. Say for example, somebody opening the website from USA and our uh, if our uh, images are hosted on S3. Okay, and so the like uh, um, uh, in that case, uh, it will doesn't matter the uh, where it is loading from. So once it is load, it will uh, cache on the its location and it will easily load it, right? So that way we are able to use different services together. Say for example, we have a CloudFront, uh, then in uh, 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 and uh, like you know on top of S3 we have a CloudFront and that CloudFront uh, CDN URL use the uh, in the front end when loading the static resources in the code level okay and also uh, ec2 run, running the application code and database in the rds okay so if we have a some heavy traffic i mean uh, we have a uh, some more clients and uh, when a load is increasing we are easily also we are able to do like auto scaling we are able to use auto scaling service okay so that is uh, in management and gover governance we have auto scaling so that auto scaling service will uh, automatically up the ec2 instances uh, when uh, we have a traffic increases on our website based on some rules we are writing into auto scaling so it will auto up the ec2 instance okay and even we are able to use load balancer so it will balance the load between multiple servers okay so that way we are able to handle the uh, unpredictable traffic through auto scaling our ec2 instance okay sometimes it's also happened like uh, whenever loads on application server we are able to do auto scaling uh, even load balancer and when we have a some load on our rds database at that time uh, sometime uh, in rds database we are able to use like uh, if we are using mysql database we are able to use uh, aurora uh, our, our rds database so it will have a better performance uh, also uh, say for example sometime we are using rds and rds is taking a much load in that case we are able to use elastic cache in between uh, so whenever we our ec2 application is doing operation on rds before doing operation on rds for fetching a data or something it will check in elastic cache uh, radius based uh, or or a mem, uh, like uh, uh, mem cache based it will uh, just check in the cache if it is available then fetch it otherwise store it and uh, next time use from cache so that way it will improve the performance of application uh, instead of only using the rds connection every time or fetching from real-time data, relational database every time so this way we are able to uh, um, enhance uh, performance of our applic performance of, of our application like introducing caching in between uh, uh, rds operation okay so we are able to use this kind of uh, different services uh, based on our needs and based on our uh, application traffic and based on our application data uh, size and all those things right so even uh, if uh, we have a rds use we have elastic case used and we have a heavy application multiple application server and an auto scaling and load balancer sometime at we our database is taking uh, down <laughs> when we have a very heavy traffic in that case we are also like we some people are using admin for generating reports right so in that case we are also able to use uh, data warehouse like amazon redshift so and what happened like we will sync our rds real-time database with our data warehouse so in admin panel whenever client generating report we are easily able to generate those reports based on this uh, data warehouse redshift database and real-time database we don't touch so it will only for real-time uh, client operation on mobile application or web application uh, interact with the uh, RDS database and uh, admin reports uh, generated from Redshift uh, data warehouse. So that way also we are able to balance our loads. Okay, so there are multiple ways uh, we can uh, do the architecture of our application and uh, uh, we can manage that. So even if we have a very extremely load uh, in our real time, like near to or near near to or a uh, uh, completely real-time uh, scenario in that case of course we go for serverless right <laughs> so this if we manage this uh, lots of uh, ec2 instance and um, uh, lots of uh, auto scaling i mean many servers and auto scaling and um, database and warehouse and many things so uh, at we lacking at some point then of course for real uh, time application and heavy traffic application and uh, heavy data application we can of course go for the serverless right so what happened 
in serverless case we can uh, easily create the serverless apis by using uh, uh, api gateway right so here we have api gateway service so that we we'll, we are able to easily able to create the endpoints then by using that uh, api gateway endpoint we are able to link that uh, uh, integrate that uh, API gateway endpoint with Lambda. So Lambda is also a serverless service. So as soon as the API gateway endpoint call from um, browser or somewhere, it will call the Lambda. So both services are serverless and Lambda is also a serverless. So it will um, execute that particular Lambda function and do the whatever business logic we want in microservice level, right? So um, that way we can do multiple microservices so, or whatever hundreds of say for example you want to implement to do APIs then we have like create uh, to do and update to do delete to do and those kind of micro or APIs microservices APIs and lambda functions are there um, okay so that way we are able to do a serverless application even uh, in some cases we have a very extremely uh, loads in our uh, serverless architecture then of course we are able to distribute like decouple uh, those operation through um, sqs and through sns and even step function we can easily or uh, uh, like we can easily do orchestration at uh, lambda uh, for multiple lambda function or, or multiple services to do the different operation like even even bridge uh, is also kind of like cool for doing scheduling kind of things in the lamp with lambda function or doing event pattern matching uh, like uh, like uh, in e-commerce application whenever invoice place then um, that uh, event placed on particular event bus and it will call different services like rebar services or invoice generated services or different kind of things based on particular uh, routing matching like right? Okay, so many things is possible with even even with so according to the needs we can design our architecture uh, either a serverless uh, then we can utilize different serverless services you know, like uh, SQS whenever extremely uh, traffic and we want to decouple the, the operation then we can use like SQS and lambdas and step function and even base and those kind of uh, services even uh, for front end uh, of our application even we are able to use amplify like a yeah, front end developer can easily uh, use amplify cl i mean amplify through like following some uh, even they can use framework and following some step they are easily able to like um, uh, install the storage and apis uh, easily they are able to go through a few step uh, and they're ready to use the admin panel and all those things so even uh, this uh, graph app sync is also kind of one option like uh, we are able to do app sync based uh, endpoint operation uh, uh, according to their our architecture and let's cover security identity and uh, compliance section which we missed uh, in between uh, in this uh, security identity and compliance section if we see the widely used service this uh, Cognito is one of the wide use service. Uh, Cognito mainly for like uh, user pool and uh, identity management uh, service. Uh, like we are easily able to uh, build a sign up and sign in uh, by using user pool uh, through Cognito. Even we are able to do federated uh, identity login uh, like Facebook and some other third party services. Uh, so like we are easily able to do sign up and sign in service even a uh, federated uh, login service through some other third party by using this amazon cognito easily we are able to integrate that with the mobile application or anything uh, so that is why they use the secure user management and uh, sign up and sign in uh, services apart from that we have this uh, of course core service iam uh, that is for like uh, all the uh, IAM role and users management uh, make sure we need to take care about the yes permission uh, rule when we are attaching the policy and granting permission to different role okay so that is a core service uh, for managing the throughout the uh, security of our roles and users in the account uh, a secret manager also widely used to service uh, um, in the serverless development, uh, uh, we are easily able to store 
uh, some secure API keys or some uh, uh, database credential in this uh, secret manager and uh, we are easily able to load that within your lambda function or anywhere and we are able to use it securely instead of hard coding or storing it at somewhere else okay so this is a really cool uh, security level services for storing the uh, secure uh, confidential credential ODB and some API cases and some other stuff okay so that is the secret manager single sign-on is also used for SSO uh, relevant operation this wrap and seal is also kind of like security uh, relevant to the DDoS attack and uh, masculinous web traffic uh, things like wrap and uh, seal used at different level uh, in different services okay so that is just uh, for uh, like DDoS and some other kind of products and so that is used at some different service level okay so this is just about uh all about security section uh, that we uh missed in between so uh, that's it let's cover some high level idea about uh architecture um like this is a kind of uh, serverless application architecture at high level a basic overview uh say for example we have a uh, uh, the front end of our um, application is hosted uh, on the S3 bucket. Uh, so this is a Amazon S3 used here and we have HTML, CSS and JavaScript code of our application hosted on this S3 uh, static. And as soon as uh, like a, a client side hit uh, on the browser hit www.xyz.com or example.com whatever website, it will call the Amazon CrowdFront service and that will uh, map to the uh, amazon s3 and load the particular static resources uh, html uh, in the browser and whenever this html load in we in dynamic application we will have uh, uh, some uh, api calls like uh, api.example.com or api.xyz.com and that api will hit the uh, amazon api gateway according to the different endpoints and that Amazon API gateway based on that different endpoint call from the particular HTML uh, of the web application, it will do Amazon API gateway endpoint call, and that endpoint will call particular Lambda function for different operation, uh, and uh, that Lambda function have uh, some business logic. It will either do the operation with DynamoDB or some RDS database. Uh, also, if possible, like doing during doing some uh, database operation according to the traffic, we are doing some caching relevant operation. If it is available from crash, then data load from there. Otherwise, it load from RDS or some database and then mm, return those uh, data to uh, API endpoint in the browser as a session or something like that. So, uh, also like in some API, we are able directly able to S3 or whatever we need. Uh, so this way, even if we have HTTPS, uh, we have a AWS certification manager, a certificate manager for loading those HTTPS secure certificate. So this way, we will have like uh, static website hosted by using Amazon S3, uh, Amazon CloudFront, and those is uh, loaded uh, separately. And as soon as it is loaded, it will do the API endpoint call that is uh, API is implemented by using Amazon API Gateway, Amazon Lambda, AWS Lambda, and some other needful DB resources like DynamoDB or RDS or some Elastic S or S3 whatever operation we need. We are, we, we, are, we are also able to implement some Lambda authorizers if we need or we are able, able to use Cognito like uh, for doing user authentication sign in sign up or some federated identity we are able to use amazon cognito okay so this way we are able to implement some kind of uh, serverless uh, web application so that will cover front end as well as back end apis and all those operations dynamically okay so this is just a serverless architecture idea after getting the uh, get to know about all the different services uh, here we have some idea about um, uh, like uh, web application hosted on ec2 kind of architectures like um, so we have a say for example in within a AWS we have a hosted a different EC web servers means as a EC2 and we have a auto scaling on top of that 
and uh, we have also have a DynamoDB or we can say RDS and all, all those database connected with this application server okay so as soon as www.xyz.com call it will call to the Amazon uh, Route 53 uh, hosted zone that will do the DNS mapping it will call to load balancer elastic load balancer will call to a particular uh, EC2 instance and according to the whenever traffic increase auto scaling will automatically up our insta uh, web, web servers uh, EC2 instance okay so that way if we have uh, some high traffic and uh, very high load on RDS or some other DB we are able to do elastic we able to use elastic cache so we can do read data from cache instead of real data, real time uh, database and all those things so here CloudWatch we can use for log uh, tracing purpose and all those things uh, okay same way like whenever called in media.example.com it will do a uh, call to the amazon cloud front so it will uh, load the resources uh, low latency resources from s3 bucket okay so the static content served through media.example.com and the application will be called uh, by using this url so this way we can uh, use different aws services and do architecture for our uh, web application like for uh, uh, like uh, custom architecture or a serverless architecture whatever we want to go for even microservice case we can use to service architecture even we can go uh, broad level by using uh, as uh, like we can use uh, many different uh, serverless services like SES, SQS, uh, step function and um, event bridge and according to our needs we can organize the different architecture at high level even in this custom architecture we can even introduce like data warehouse and uh, like red shift uh, uh, according to our needs we can uh, scale up uh, our architecture and we can handle the more loads okay so this is just a high level idea about the architecture things so as soon as you can explore more you will get uh, more and more idea on that uh, so this is a completely overview on all different services different architecture uh, if you like this kind of session uh, please don't forget to uh, like uh, share and subscribe my channel please do share it uh, with everyone and don't forget to subscribe it thank you so much for your time and looking into this but don't forget to um, uh, explore it practically yourself you will of course get attack on this uh, AWS is rocking around thank you community thank you so much uh, for your time